Hello and welcome back to Euro Truck Simulator 2 for my career Fafa Freights, a subsidiary of SD Logistics. As we continue our con Conquering Britain series, we will say continuing, continuing. No, it's our Conquering Britain series. Uh, we are in Carlisle. We left off in Carlisle just a minute ago. I'm going to do back to back recordings on this, hence same clothes and same sweaty head. It is hot. But we need to find a job, so let's go do it. So looking at the local freight market here for Carlisle, there isn't a great deal going on, especially UK wise. That is two trips to Hollyhead, seven or oh, fifteen grand for that one, and twenty-two grand for that one. And we got Birmingham as well here, which is uh, twenty grand. I might take that one. Chimney systems. I don't think I've done chimney systems before. Uh, we've probably done honey. And we've definitely done use plastics, so let's do some chimney. Do some chimney, chimney, chim chimney. Let's go get it, let's find it. So between Turn left. jobbies, I have rested through the night. It was sort of late, late afternoon, so I thought I'd get some rest in. Uh, we did a double sleep, which has brought it to around midday though. We still should be alright, plenty of time. Let's get our deliveries in. Uh, that should have brought our money round as well. 180 grand. So by the end of this delivery, um, our drivers, most of our drivers should be back with another delivery as well. Or have completed another delivery. I don't think we'll be a hundred, another 120 grand up by the end of the episode, but... If we're at that three, if we're at that three hundred thousand mark, we could get another truck and driver. Turn right. Back into UPS. This is where we just dropped off. I wonder. No, it won't be there because we slept. So I wonder if our trailer will still be there. But it's not. It's gone. The caravans we dropped off yesterday have already moved. Right on time. This UPS dry freight trailer. The the options were pretty standard, so we've just sort of left as is. So it's going to be a, a nice one to get in and out of. So that's the end one. Have we picked up from here before? This is a very familiar yard. They might all be very similar, but yeah. Definitely feels like somewhere we've been here. Live safe. All hooked up, ready and rearing to go. Right. So we have a little little look see at the job before we head out. Uh, we have squint with one good eye. Five hours, nearly six hours out from the delivery point from Birmingham. We've got Birmingham UPS chimney systems, eighteen tons. Uh, they expect us to arrive uh, Sunday between uh, sort of five fifteen and midnight. 20 grand and we do have 12 hours on the job but like I say it's less than 6 hours so easy easy it is now 12 o'clock so we should be able to do this before it gets dark as well which would be nice hopefully a nice smooth sailing it was, uh, I didn't mention that I don't think lovely lovely run last time out no incidents incident free that's what they call us incident free Farquhar <laughs> smooth, smooth mother trucker. So no doubt we'll have plenty, plenty of goings on today. That's how it goes. That's how it works. Turn right. So I think I caught my mic earlier today. I don't think it's in the right place. It feels a bit further away. So apologies if, left, even left. after I've done my magic, <laughs> magic. The audio is terrible all the time. But even after I've had a little further, I do apologise if we sound a bit funny, but I feel like I'm a lot further away from the mic than I normally am. I don't like having it in in camera for when I'm streaming, so it generally stays just just out. It's like literally just out of the camera shot. But I may I might look to invest in a different sort of boom. 
Um, because this one comes over the top of everything. I might try and get a low profile boom so it'll come out underneath. So it just sort of sit right where my hand is all the time. But yeah, try, try something different. If you go going faceless, to be fair, you can get your cam, you can get my wife in front of you and no one knows, but. I, I used to have it sort of angled in front of me. I never really liked it. I used to smack it all the time. So that's why we've gone with a boom over the top. So that's that's on the on the wish list for Amazon, along with the camera. So eventually, eventually these things come. Face time. I want to try. <laughs> I want to try and do some weight. So I've actually invested in. <laughs> they're probably never going to work. But they, there's some some high quality, like proper resistance bands with anchors for doors and stuff like that. So you can really, really go at it. Because I just I don't have the time to get to a gym. I need to do something. Three ways just take up so much space. I got some kettlebells, but because you have to buy kettlebells generally in shops, they just never seem to be that heavy. Like it's just not, not like at a gym where you get some really nice ones. So if you order some heavy ones, you have to pay a fortune for it for postage. So I think I've said before we got <laughs> got a couple of kettlebells, and they're mainly used as doorstops. So. So see what I can do. I want to just something that's going to just make me sweat a bit more. Do some stuff. Weather's going to be nice. I want to try and get out and walk a bit more and yeah, just do some stuff during the day. I've said this many times before, but you know, the last four years I've spent obviously since the little man came along and you know COVID and everything. I've spent four years sitting at home just getting fatter and fatter, and it's disgusting. So. We need to do more about it. We need to do more about it. Go straight. Don't worry, I'm not going to do um, fatty progress uh, videos or anything like that. Not that you want it. I'm going to need to do some uh, health and lifestyle videos. <laughs> Me sweating in my kitchen. <laughs> Before and after, fat me and then not quite so fat me. <laughs> I'm taking the middle lane, mainly because we keep getting those non non British junctions where we have to keep pulling out right and whatnot, so we're gonna hog the middle lane for a bit. We probably won't get one now on this trip, but I just I get fed up of getting caught out on them. I think because they're not British junctions, I just don't expect them. But anyway, I haven't said it yet because I said it in the last one. No, we only just finished recording it. I hope you're all well. Hope you're having a uh, pleasant week. I hope, hopefully, the sun has stayed around for two weeks, and um, yeah, we're having nice weather at the minute here. Nice and warm. Hence why I'm a little bit, <laughs> a little bit wet. <laughs> Sweat my Jacobs off in this PC. Room. I've got a massive fan blowing. It makes no difference. But when you got, you know, three monitors. Put your stream lights aimed at you and a light on above you. The blackout window, the blackout curtains, and the uh, the room fan don't really do much. And I've been saying it for a while now. I want to move this whole room and set up around again. I thought I'd prefer it this way, but I really, I really don't. I really don't. I feel so spread out, and it doesn't need to be. I need to compact my shit down. So I can have it along a, a smaller wall, I think. I 
would be nice. Like it was before. And then instead of, instead of having this monitor here, I, I'd stick it up above and I'd, all the all the all the tart, all my little figures and collectible cups and what have you, they can sit on this desk and that'll be behind me. I think. Or it'll sit on that chest of drawers that'll fit in this space behind me better. Rather than having something sort of off centre in the background. If it's centred behind me, it wouldn't look so weird because that, that, that annoys me when I, when I know that's there. So I'm keeping the camera, I'm just describing the room, so I'm keeping the camera on for this one. So, hello? Yeah. Yeah, I want to try and go, go to do a little bit more uh, with with the camera on. For series that are, 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 are well in, although it's quite well in, but we stream a lot, so there's often, you know, my fat face in it. Um, I won't suddenly drop my face in the snow runner stuff. Hopefully that's up and running again now. Um, but yeah, I won't suddenly drop my face in that. I don't think I'll bother with, like, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to do any pre-records for FS22. I think I'm just going to stick to trying to do live streams. So we'll, uh, I'm not worried about that, but maybe for FS23 we might get some some face action. <laughs> got, got some face action in in FS20 23, not 23, 25. That's if I do FS25. I'm still not sure on that. At the point of recording this, we've not seen nothing more than the uh, than the first uh, cinematic trailer and the five screenshots. And those five screenshots were out of date from the build that they had at the time of release and so I don't I don't understand why someone didn't just pop back in the office, take some new screenshots, put the FS25 logo on it and upload them instead. Like why 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 release your first bit of promotional uh, media with your most out of date imagery? That makes no sense to me. Especially when, you know, you really need, they, they really need to be selling 25 uh, to the people because visually it's not going to be all that different. And yeah, we can have a bit of fog and we've got to get some, you know, god rays from the sun and stuff like that. That'll come through in a screenshot. But it's got to be the game that's got to be different. So putting up some screenshots that don't look all too different from FS22, other than a bit of fog in one of them. Wasn't, wasn't great. I think the, the one with the fog was the only thing that looked like it was maybe the next game along. I think all the other screenshots could have been taken from FS22. The only one that looked different was was that. Well, I will see. We'll see. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, over the summer, over the coming weeks, um, FarmCon, I think Giants have said they're gonna, if, because obviously <laughs> people aren't gonna, everyone that's interested in the game is gonna go over to FarmCon. It'd be absolutely, you know, physically impossible. Um, I think they're gonna try and get some some live streams up during FarmCon of the game, or or record some stuff and upload, and hopefully that'll be like with 22 and 22 came out. They did uh, quite a few preview videos that centred around specific parts of the gameplay. It also protected the game from the things that weren't quite so good because they they only just shoot these few things around a small area of the map. So if there are if there are flaws in it we, we won't get to see it unfortunately. But I, I need to see stuff working. I, <laughs> I need to I know I know there are people out there that have you know I don't know why they're already boasting or bragging that they've pre-ordered it and, and this, that and the other. So, no matter how, how much of a fan of you are of a series of a game, I see you, this day and age, you've got to be mad to hit pre-order and pull the trigger on a pre-order. But anything that you've not actually seen, there's been, excuse me, no game footage released and people are paying for pre-order. I know you can cancel the pre-order, but people have fundamentally handed over money for something that they haven't even seen yet. That's crazy. That sort of behaviour is why publishers and developers get away with releasing bad games time and time again. 
and like I said a few weeks ago, like you can you can hit pre-order literally an hour before the game's released and get all the same bonuses as someone that orders it now without seeing the game and you can be fully clued up on knowing what you get without making that commitment. The thing that I like, and I, I do I have? I'm not sure if I have. I think I have the uh, the Commodore that they did it with 22. There was also a second. They did a Commodore 64 version that you could get a farm sim. Um, but with the, with 25 in the, I'm sure it's only in the collector's edition, so I might not have it. Because I haven't. They're in the collector's edition for 25. There's, I'm sure it's a 32-bit version of farm sim which actually looks intriguing. For someone who likes a bit of retro game and some of those old games, and, you know, the 1632, 64-bit era, I, I yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to buy a uh, collector's edition just for that, though. But, yeah, it, it looks cool. The idea of that looks cool. The screenshot, because it's just one tiny screenshot that's been shown that represents it. The other made me chuckle, that intrigued me. Now if I if I do pull the trigger and I do get FS25 and the FS25 videos you know, do well and generate some income, maybe I'll save up that 20, FS25 money and get myself the collector's edition just for 32-bit farm soon. <laughs> We shall see. We'll see. We'll see. But if I decide, you know, that 25 isn't the one for me, and I'm fed up with the same thing, <laughs> and the same broken physics, and the same tiny baby steps forward, despite it being three years, then... Um, yeah, I guess it'll free us up for a lot of other content. Which I'm always up for. Especially since my uh, my games back catalogue is now well over a thousand games because of <laughs> penny sales. Plus that unlimited tapped resource of uh, emulation. Plenty of things to do. I want to I want to try and um, do some more retro stuff because I've I've really liked doing the ones I've done. I'm not sure how many have released at this point, so I'm not going to say too much. But I know two have, so... Um, yeah, with the, uh, the Tocker and the Column, Column of Cray, um, I've got to do some stuff with their follow-up games as well, so Tocker 2, Column of Cray 2.0. Sort of look at them. Uh, but I'm not just going to stick with racing games. Um, there's there's some, some old Mega Drive Genesis games I want to want to have a little look, look at because that was although that wasn't like the first console that was like the console that got me into gaming the, the Mega Drive that was the one when we got that I'm not sure how old I would have been at the time but yeah when we, we got our Mega Drive and I'll save my Mega Drive stories for Mega Drive videos um, but yeah we're going to do some Mega Drive games I probably won't go much further the back than that. Maybe an NES. So we might do uh, Super Nintendo and Nintendo Mega Drive. We won't do much Master System. We already play Master System, so there's not much for me to go look at Master System wise. Was it Alex the Kids, the one that was built into it? Other than that, I didn't really play much uh, Master System. And then we'll just sort of progress forward from there looking at different stuff, different games. Some games I want to try and actually play play rather than just have a little look at as well. Hopefully they won't be long ones, although one or two of them that I've got in my mind that I'd like to try and do a playthrough on and record and, and share it might take a while, but everything I do takes a while. This, I can't Unless it's those like, little indie games that I play that, that no one watches, uh, everything takes a long time on this channel. 
I, I do enjoy a six to ten hour indie game on Game Pass that I can do in one or two nights and just have fun with. I, I, I love them. But getting the right one for me, and then you know, really see these are the junctions I don't like. These are the junctions. Um, I got to come out, mate. I'm sorry. Go straight. Look at that. Don't have junctions like that here in the UK. We don't have them. Um, yeah, and getting one I think might get a, <laughs> a middle school audience is the uh, is the challenge on that. Keep right. Then continue straight. But if you're if you're new to the channel watching Go this straight. and any of this jabber is of any interest to you and you think you might like to follow along, please hit the subscribe button. Turn the bell notification on, get notified when uh, new videos go live. I try and get yeah, them in, I'm trying to get out like four or five videos a week, plus a stream or two. I don't know how well that's going, because obviously I'm recording this one ahead of schedule. But hopefully, hopefully it's going well. Yeah, we do have a, a little. Not a little, it's quite a big, it's quite a big target for um, a subscriber goal by the end of the year. It's, yeah, I think it's way out of reach, considering I set a subscriber goal growth to 3,000 for last year, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's halfway through this year already, and we're not even at that 3,000 for last year. But I'd like to be as close to 5,000, as I can get. I mean, you know. Ultimately, most people know like the subscriber goal doesn't really mean anything. It's just like a just a nice little confidence boost to get get some subs. Um, it's a it's a vanity figure. Once you hit 1,000 subscribers, it doesn't matter how many subscribers you got. It's all about views, retention, and click through. Nothing else matters. But it, it would be nice. It would be nice to see my channel grow <laughs> at a similar rate to those that are around me doing similar or same content. I know I dip my, my toe into a lot of different fields and that's that's sort of what slows me down. But that's how I am. I, I'm not a, not a one-trick pony channel. I, I have way too many interests and I enjoy way too many games. I'm speeding, getting excited about so 30. 30 on this dual carriageway. But yeah, if you, if you enjoy it, give us a little sub. Why not? I had someone comment on the uh, on the on the hunt and, uh, the other day to let me know that they weren't a subscriber, but they they've um, they saved my playlist so they could come back to it to see whenever I've put something new up. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. The fact that they came back and they left a comment to let me know that they'd come back to watch it because a new one had been up, and I do intend on putting more hunting up as well. By the way, um, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Not a sub, but wanted to let you know. I've saved this playlist, and I'm glad I decided to come back and have a look. Keep up the great work. Look forward to more. That was a nice message. That's a great comment. And I didn't even ask him to sub off that. Like, that's cool. You've saved the playlist. This is what you like to watch. Good on you, man. Perhaps I need to do more of that. But yeah, I love a comment. I love, I love some feedback. As like I say, it's not got really a lot of feedback. It's just a little comment. Say something. Do something. Whatever. Comments and interaction really help the videos to go out further because then the YouTube algorithm knows that this caused an engagement. It got you to stop doing whatever else you're doing at the time of watching and actually interact with it. So if there's any point you want to say something, please do. Ask questions. Questions are allowed. Well, that's it. That was a nice, easy one, that one. Apart from the speed near the end there, which is a shame. It did spoil a little, but... I'll take that as a relatively clean delivery again. Let's just get that in the uh, in the box. Beautiful. Handbrake on. Engine off. Detach. 
So we leveled up last time as well. So we've got a long slog. Although I'm not too worried about these levels because they are uh, to go into the into the uh, just in time deliveries, which I don't think we do. I've not really looked for them. I'm just not not something I actively seek. I don't like to be brushed. But for this delivery, we are done. So for this episode, we are also done. Uh, hopefully you did enjoy it. Like I say, any any comments, any feedback, drop it down there. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, turn the bell notification on, find out new videos going live. You now, thumbs up are welcome. They help to get the videos going, push them further. Uh, but you guys have a wonderful day. Hopefully you got some sun. You have a pleasant weekend, and I shall see you soon. Bye-bye.